Hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero. welcome back to my channel where we cover Monster Hunter content, I am so glad you are here and today I will be going over the quests that you absolutely must do and cannot miss out on that will be available for the Spring Blossom Festival of 2019. This will be a guide for the Spring Blossom Festival which starts on April 26th and ends on May 16th, but this guide may be helpful even in future festivals. All of the quests that I will be showcasing in this video are available on all platforms except for the Horizon Zero Dawn collaboration which is exclusive to PlayStation. I will be focusing on the quests that give you unique rewards such as armor sets, weapons and layered armors and will be going by order of importance. There is a lot to go through so let's get started. But before we do so, if you would like to win a $60 gift card for any platform of your choosing, me and my friend Jacob are doing a giveaway and all you need to do in order to participate is subscribe to our channels and go to the link in the description below. The more entries you complete, the higher your chances of winning the giveaway will be. Good luck to everyone that is participating in the giveaway and with that being said, let's get started. Ok, so the very first quest I'm going to be covering is the Greatest Jaguars Event Quest. In this quest, you will be going up against a Great Jaguars that is much larger than normal. In fact, this Great Jaguars is actually stronger than a Devil Joe. But the cool part about this quest is that whenever the Great Jaguars spits out food, it also spits out decorations. As such, this quest is perfect for farming decorations. One very easy and fast method that you can do to farm these decorations is to simply wait for the Greatest Jaguars to arrive and eat one of the Eptonoth and once he does, just put on the Temporal Mantle and wait for him to spit out the food and the decorations. By the time the Temporal Mantle runs out, the Greatest Jaguars will be going to a different area, so use that opportunity to pick up the different decorations that the Greatest Jaguars has dropped. If you are on PC, you can install the Light Pillared mod in order to find those decorations more easily. Once you pick all of the decorations, open the Options menu and go to Return from Quest. That way you will be going back to Astera, but you will still retain all of the decorations you have gotten. This is especially useful for those who cannot optimize their builds in order to efficiently farm the Greatest Jaguars, and so this ends up being the fastest method of farming decorations for those players. Do keep in mind that this quest will not be available throughout the entire duration of the festival. The Greatest Jaguars event quest will only be here up until May 3rd, but once that quest is gone, the quest My Name is Lavazioth will take its place and will go from May 3rd up until May 17th. And this quest is even better when it comes to farming decorations because it has a higher chance of giving you the rarest decorations. I'm talking about the attack boost decoration, handicraft decoration, free element, you know the ones that you have been chasing for a very long time, this is the quest that is most likely to give you those decorations. For the My Name is Lavasioth event quest, simply take down the Tempered Lavasioth, it doesn't take a lot of trouble and if you have a coordinated team it should be very easy. Make sure you don't miss out on both of these quests as they are helpful to all kinds of players. After all, everyone needs those rare decorations for their builds. The third quest that I'm going to be talking about is of course the Fury of Eldorado Siege quest, the one where you go up against Arc Tempered Kulftaroth. PC players have finally been able to do this quest, but regardless I thought I should mention this because it is a very important quest to do. By completing this quest you will of course be able to farm the Kiar weapons that are some of the best weapons in the game as they come with the skills, critical element or crit status. And on top of that you will also be able to craft the Kulf Taroth Gamma armor set but it isn't too special so don't worry about that just focus on the Kiar weapons. But speaking of Arc Tempered Monsters, we should also talk about all of the Arc Tempered Monsters that you will be able to do throughout this festival. All Elder Dragons that are currently available in Monster Hunter World except for Nurgigante and Behemoth have their Arc Tempered version available in a specific event quest that will reward you with a Gamma Armor Set and a Layered Armor Set. By order of release we have Arc Tempered Kirin in the event quest called A Whisper of White Mane which will give you the Kirin Gamma armor set as well as the Blossom Laird set. Arc Tempered Valhazak in the event quest called Deathly Quiet Curtain which will give you the Valhazak Gamma set as well as the Death Stench Laird set. 
Arc Temper Teostra in the event quest called Scorn of the Sun, which will give you the Kaiser Gamma set as well as the Dante Leard set. Arc Tempered Kushala Daora will be available in the event quest called Eye of the Storm, which will give you the Kushala Gamma set as well as the Guild Cross Leard set. Arc Tempered Lunastro will be available in the event quest called When Blue Dust Surpasses Red Lust, which will give you the Lunastro Gamma set as well as the Sakura Full Body Layered set. Arc Tempered Zora Magdaros will be available in the event quest called Undying Alpenglow, which will give you the Zora Magdaros Gamma set as well as the Origin Layered set. Arc Tempered Zenojiva will be available in the event quest called Like a Moth to a Flame which will give you the Zenojiva Gamma set as well as the Commission Layered set. And finally, Arc Tempered Kalftaroth is, like I said earlier, available in the Siege Quest Fury of Eldorado, which will reward you with the Kalftaroth Gamma set and the Kiar weapons. If you don't have a lot of time to be farming all of these Arc Tempered monsters and are looking for the ones that give you the best armor sets, then you should be prioritizing Zenojiva, Teostra and Kushala Daora and maybe even Zora Magdaros. The Xenojiva Gamma set is perfect for all Bogan users, so make sure you pick that up if you consider using the Light Bogan or the Heavy Bogan. The Teostra Gamma set is great as it can give you critical eye level 7 with only 3 pieces of the armor set and with just those 3 pieces you are able to also get Master's Touch, which is a great set bonus. The Kushala Gamma set is very good because of all of the handicraft you can get from it and if you use ice weapons then you can take even more advantage of it. And the Zora Gamma set is good for any critical status build, but now that we have Kiara weapons it isn't as good as it was when it was first introduced. Now let's talk about the USJ quests. Initially, you would have to visit Universal Studios Japan to get a code to be able to do this quest and it would only be available on PlayStation 4. But since then, Capcom has opened up the USJ quests for everyone and now you can do the USJ Gold Star Treatment and the USJ Blazing Azure Stars event quests. And by doing those two quests, you will be able to get the Azure Star Lord armor set, the Azure Star Blade Longsword and the Palico armor set. The armor set not only looks good, but it is actually pretty decent because it is part of the Rathalos set bonus. So you can combine pieces of this armor set with the Rathalos armor set in order to obtain the Rathalos mastery set bonus. Now let's talk about quests that give you weapons and the very first quest I'm going to be mentioning is of course Every Hunter's Dream. This event quest is the one that gives you the Wyvern Ignition Greatsword which is by far the strongest greatsword in the game. So if you are a greatsword user, definitely do not miss out on this event quest. Some other weapons that you can only get from events are the Downy Craig Dual Blades which you can get from the event quest called Where Sun Meets Moon. You can get the Bristly Hammer from the Timberland Troublemakers. The Sapphire Star Lance from the Midnight Mayhem event quest. Dante's Charge Blade from the event Code Red, which is part of the Devil May Cry collaboration which also gives you Dante's armor set. Series Dual Blades, which are called Zerial, as well as the upgraded version of Geralt's Sword and Shield can be obtained from the quest Contract Woodland Spirit. Do note that this event quest will only be available for PC players starting on May 17th. And if you are on PlayStation 4, you can do the PlayStation exclusive event quest called The Proving to get the Aloy Bow. Now for some more event specific rewards. Wiggle Me This is the event quest that allows you to craft the almighty Wiggler helmet. And if you want to get the Wiggler head layered armor, then you'll have to complete the quest King's No No Fear, which will also allow you to get the sealed eye patch layered armor. And if you want to craft the regular sealed eye patch armor piece, then you need to complete the event quest called Scrapping with the Shamos. You'll need to complete a flash in the pen to get the Shadow Shades Alpha and Egg Lovers United to get the Kuliyaku headpiece. If you also want the Kuliyaku layered armor, then you will need to complete the Greatest Jagras event quest as well. If you want to get the Skull Mask layered armor, then you'll need to complete the Greatest Jagras event quest. For the Beetle layered set, you'll need to complete the event quest called My Name is Lavazioth. And to get the Butterfly layered set as well as the Queen Beetle armor set, you'll need to complete the challenge quest that is called Gajalaka Outbreak. 
Completing the Royal Pain event quest will allow you to get the Mosswine Mask and the Faux Feline Mask as layered armor pieces. Completing the challenge quest called Down the Dark Muddy Path will allow you to craft the low rank version of Ryu's full body armor set. But if you want the high rank version of Ryu's full body armor set, then you'll need to complete the challenge quest that is named The Awakened Satsui no Hado. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. To get Sakura's full body armor set, you'll need to complete the challenge quest called Empress in Full Bloom. And completing the event quest called A Rush of Blood will allow you to craft the Mega Man Palico armor set. A visitor from Eorzea Extreme is the quest where you go up against an extreme behemoth and upon completion you'll be able to get the Draken layered armor. Completing the event quest called SDF, Silent, Deadly and Fierce will allow you to get the Bayek layered armor as well as the Assassin's Hood as part of the Assassin's Creed collaboration. Do note that PC players will only be able to do this quest starting on May 3rd up until May 16th. And completing the event quest called Contract Woodland Spirit will allow you to not only craft series dual blades and upgrade Geralt's sword and shield like I said earlier, but it will also allow you to craft series full body armor set and get series full body layered set and Geralt's full body layered set. And if you are on PS4, you will also be able to do the Lessons of the Wild Event quest to get the Watcher Palico armor set, as well as the Feline Watcher Grinder as part of the Horizon Zero Dawn collaboration, and still as part of the Horizon Zero Dawn collaboration, so these are PlayStation 4 exclusives. By completing the Proving Event quest, you'll be able to get Aloy's Bow as I said earlier, but you will also be able to get Aloy's Alpha armor set, and the Heart of the Nora event quest will allow you to craft Aloy's full body gamma armor set and Aloy's layered set. And these are all of the quests that will be giving you special rewards that you cannot get from anywhere else in the game. Many of these quests do require you to be Hunter rank 50 or higher, so if you're not at that point already, you can complete the event quests Snow and Cherry Blossom and A Nose for an Eye in order to increase your Hunter rank faster. Some other event quests that may be worth mentioning here is for example Greeting the Gluttons which allows you to get a lot of food vouchers which are always useful whenever you start a difficult quest and you may want to guarantee getting feline moxie or feline insurance so it's always a good thing to stack up on those food vouchers. Plus, it is a good quest for you to bring a bandit mantle and farm for Zenny, and do keep in mind that throughout the duration of the festival, all of the items that you can purchase in the game will be at a severe discount, so do take advantage of that and stock up on your consumables. If you have found this guide helpful, then please drop a like on the video as it greatly helps me out. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and turn on show notifications if you don't want to miss an ounce of Monster Hunter goodness. If you want to vote on what my next Monster Hunter Top 10 or Top 5 video will be, then head on over to Patreon and become a patron like these beautiful people. A big thank you to my patrons for choosing to support me and helping me keep this channel alive. You guys are my heroes and a special thank you to Guild Arts Gaming for being a mighty hero. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Dark Hero and happy hunting!